This is Joseph Coco. I'm at ALA Annual 2015 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking, Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourself, John. I am John Green. I am the artist of Teen Boat, the only graphic novel about a teenager that can transform into a small yacht. Awesome. And Dave Roman is the writer for that, correct? That is correct. Okay, and how did the project get started? Uh, it started as a mini comic. Uh, just like an eight-page, photocopied, black-and-white, staple-together comic um, that Dave and I would do. Uh, we just had this silly idea of a teenager named Teen Boat who transformed into a boat. Um, and our friends thought it was funny, so we just did it as a side project. Eventually, it made its way across the desk of an editor at Clarion Books, okay. and they wanted to republish it as a full-color graphic novel. Uh, so we did that. The first book came out in 2012. The second one, called The Race for Boat Lantis, comes out uh, this September. Yeah, I was just telling you, I um, recently saw the trailer for that, and I was a little bit familiar with um, Teen Boat, but uh, it, it came on my radar, and I was like, yeah, that's probably something I should look into. It, it had slipped <laughs> my mind. Um, so, is Clarion, you didn't approach them. They just uh, they came to you and said, "Hey, I, I've got a book deal for you if you're interested in it." Is uh, that's <laughs> just about. That is almost what happened. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, Dave does have an agent who was showing it around, but not not <coughs> like um, not Active feverishly. <laughs> Because, as, as I said, we just had, it was a side project, and it was just a black and white mini-comic. Yeah. Uh, and Dave so there was Astronaut Academy. And yeah, and Dave had Astronaut Academy, well. and we just had kind of like some higher profile things that we thought would be, you know, publishers would yeah, be more, more interested easily, in. Yeah, to, to become a publishing deal. Exactly. But we did have the mini-comics, and I think it was actually a... Uh, just a mutual friend or just a fan like a, a, a person who became a fan of the mini comics who knew an editor and was just like here you should read this funny book yeah. and then the editor I think approached Dave's agent and that's how the ball got rolling and yeah so. that sounds like a old school sort of comic deal going on yeah so it's yeah it's pretty that things like that still happens yeah it can still happen Okay, and what's bringing you to ALA? Uh, obviously, the second volume is coming out. Have you been promoting yes. that more, or has it mostly just been, this is the first volume, you can pick it up now, it can be in your libraries? Um, well, it's, it's, it's both. We're definitely pushing the second book, because sure. it comes out very soon. Uh, but also, it is a lot of um, reconnecting with librarians that we've met since yeah. the first book came out. Uh, when the first book came out, it was, it was all new to them. You know, none of their kids had read it. You know, no one's seen it. And they would just say, well, this seems like a funny kid enough friendly. idea yeah. that, you know, a kid might want to read. Um, and so you go to librarian shows and you'll get a lot, of, a lot of teachers and librarians come and they will say, oh, you know, the, the kids have read this book and they're excited about the next one and they want to know what, how, what's more. And you're like, well... There is, here is the new one. It comes out soon. Sure. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of everything. It is, it is also good to kind of sell the book, the first book, to people that haven't come across it yet yeah. uh, and get that out there. Yeah, but um, it's really just staying in the circuits of the library. Yeah, it's yeah. staying in the circuits, being, you know, everyone is more likely to remember you if they see your face. Yeah. And they that's, can attach it to your book. That's and the motivation that, for most conventions, honestly. Yeah. Like indie cons, anime cons, yeah. just anything. It, the more people see you um, in person, but as well as online, the more likely they are to think about you exactly. um, and spend money on you, frankly. so Definitely. Okay. And you've worked at ALA before? Uh, I did ALA Chicago uh, two years ago. Okay. Uh, and that was, that was wonderful. It was a very great show. Uh, so I, I definitely I give a thumbs up to ALA in general. They're always right. they're always a blast. It's, and it's always organized by the same people, or it's different for different um, cities. Well, it's know? I don't know the behind the scenes logistics. Yeah, but so, for all intents and purposes, it's the same show. Yeah, whatever. it's, it's yeah. for all intents and purposes, it's the same show. It's all the American Library Association. Yeah, but different cities have different vibes. So sure. like. 
This is, I've only done two shows, but this is definitely a different vibe from Chicago. Last year it was in Las Vegas, which everyone that went said was a totally different vibe. Yeah. Uh, so it does change and evolve from where you go. But I think that kind of makes it a little more interesting sometimes compared to like San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, it's yeah. always in the same place, always the same people. Here you get a different mix each time. You don't know what to expect. Okay. And are librarians buying, uh, if you don't mind me asking, mostly for um, personal, like their, their home collections, or are they buying for their library collections? I'd say uh, I personally mix. get probably a 50-50 mix. That is fantastic. Of librarians who come and they say, oh, I'll, I'll pick this up for, you know, for, for my school or my library. Yeah. And, um, or sometimes they'll say, oh, I'll give me a flyer and I'll pass it along to the graphic novel buyer. Yeah. Uh, and a, a lot of other times they are, they are people that are also parents and they, you know, want to get a copy for their kids. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's a good book. So yeah. Why not? So. Um, so, I, having done ALA before, I don't know how closely you track this, but um, I, ha I haven't managed to ask anyone, how, how soon do those um, like selector after the show sort of sales come in? Is it something that just trickles on over time, um, or is it like two weeks after the show you sell 40, 100 books or whatever? Uh, for, since our book is through, um, you know, we're, we're put out by a major publisher, yeah. So we don't get the the, the feedback, metrics but, yeah. immediately. We get um, like quarterly reports. Mm -hmm. So so every three or four months or however it is, it might be they might be triannual, you know, whatever. It, it's, it might be different for every diff publisher. Yeah, how sure. often they send out so your, you just, your you sales. Can't, can't keep track of that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. they're roy <laughs> You get like royalty statements, and it'll say this is how many books were bought in this market and that market and that market <laughs> and how many were returned in this market or that market or that market and then it just gives you a tally so uh, so while it does often separate between um, retail sales and library sales it, it's hard to tell exactly when those sales happened sure so you can't say oh we got a bump because of this convention yeah. when I won't, I won't know about sales from this kind of exposure until six months from now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also wanted to ask, we were comparing uh, ALA and book conventions in general to other independent comic conventions. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say, I mean, you, you are appealing mostly to kids, um, or if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> I, I, I should have asked you that, um, but uh, based on the cover, it seems like it would, it would definitely appeal to kids. Um, had, are, are, is it easier to reach kids at a book show um, like ALA than it is at an independent comic convention? Um, that's tough. I feel like at um, at comic shows, which are, are consumer shows, they're public shows. You don't have to be a member of an organization. Yeah. You are more likely to get more traffic from kids. Uh, so you, you, you might just be exposed to more of your target audience. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are more receptive. Uh, the kids, we do, we do see parents uh, who are teachers or librarians or other publishers, book industry people come to a show like this and sometimes they'll bring their kids and almost without a doubt, those kids have more of a sense of reading ingrained yeah. into them because they grow up with someone who you know is so makes books or books. pushes books yeah. or whatever. Um, but but we will see considerably less kids than at a comic show, and a lot of times, com at comic shows. Depending on the parents, sometimes the parents are the true fans, yeah. and they're bringing their kids along, trying to get them, often trying to get them into the things that they liked when they were younger. Right. So the problem with that turns around, oh, I read Spider-Man, I want you to read Spider-Man. Yeah. Where does that leave for independent creators? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, if, 
you know, the best times are when the parent just is just trying to encourage the kid to read yeah, and pick up something that they would as, like as much as they can. It was, yeah, and then and then those kids, you know, hopefully, hopefully, then they are convincing enough to their parents to give them the money to buy the book. <laughs> yeah, that's that's always funny because some parents are very iffy about you yeah. selling directly to a child. But frankly, when when I was a kid, I would want someone who's trying to sell me their book to talk to me like yeah if, if I am who's going to be reading your book mostly I mean my parents might read it to make sure it's um, sanitary Nothing, and there, yeah, there's certainly yeah. a, a <laughs> lot of all ages authors now who um, the books are perfect for any age group but um, if, if you're trying to sell a book to me talk to me and we can work something out I'll, I'll convince my parents yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, what's been your experience uh, just reaching kids at um, at independent comic conventions? Uh, you you said there's actually more kids you found at independent comic conventions. Uh, that I, I'd say that are so. To, to take a chance on your work compared to, well, I think it's just uh, in order of quantity. Like here, yeah. you know, the ALA is a huge show. You yeah. get. You know, it, there, there's, there's, it's giant compared to, um, you know, a small convention like Kids Read Comics. Right. Uh, there's, there's not nearly as much foot traffic, but Kids Read Comics one, it's specifically targeted towards kids, so you will definitely get a lot more kids there. Yeah. And here, there are no, no, there, there aren't any kids that are saying, "Ooh, I want to go to ALA." Like, yeah. The kids that are here. There's so much else here other than the artist alley that. Yeah, it just, it's is not, not just comics. It's a it's an entire book industry. Thing. Buy a two thousand dollar book scanner or what? Yeah, they're not here to get whatever library services and things. They are here because their parent or guardian or whomever is bringing them along. Yeah. And often, like, if it's, oh, you know, ALA is in San Francisco this year, kids, let's go to San Francisco. So it's a about a four-day show. You'll see that kid on one day. The rest of the time, they are sightseeing with the other parent or the other whomever. Sure. Uh, and the parent who works in the industry is here for all four days, you know. Yeah. So that's that's just the nature of like a trade show and an industry show and a consumer-based, you know, convention. Okay. And what do you have coming out in the near future? Obviously, Volume Two is about to launch in yes. September. We're going to be able to find that at any uh, bookstore, or Amazon. Sh- that yeah, sort of thing. yeah. It's 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 already it's up for pre-order at Amazon or IndieBound or Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Uh, it is being serialized currently at TeenBoatComics.com, which is where you can also see an animated trailer. Sure. Um, and it comes out September, uh, just about anywhere. Yeah. Um, the next book that I'll have coming out is an early graphic novel, re- early reader graphic novel. This is like for kids five to seven or so. Okay. Uh, that comes out next May from First Second Books, and it's called Fantastic. Hippopotamister. It's about a hippopotamus who lives in a rundown zoo who is convinced by his friend the red panda to leave the zoo and get jobs amongst the humans. Okay. Yeah, I find animals are usually a good way to attract that age range. Oh, yeah. Every, yeah. Everyone just adores the zoo, basically. So any sort of animals you can throw at them will yes. excite uh, <laughs> readers in the uh, early um, phase. But uh, where could we find your work online if we wanted to uh, hear progress? On... Um, well, teamboatcomics.com is okay. probably where that's where you're one stop for all things Teen Boat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, for my personal site is johngreenart.com, uh, but I, I do not, I Updated woefully neglect it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And would you, finally, would you have any advice to an artist who's considering tabling at ALA for the first time? Um, Either in the Artist Alley or the Zine Pavilion or... Um, it's tough. I'd say, I'll say it's a great show, and... I'd say you'll come into it as a networking show, yeah. as one where you want to uh, you want to promote your your book and your work to 
a certain type of gatekeeper. So librarians yeah. are, in a way, gatekeepers, not in a bad way. But they are a person that will look at your work and say, I know, I know X number of kids yeah. that I could reach with this. Mm -hmm. And so that one librarian is, is, you know, greater outreach than, like, one sale at a comic show. Sure. Uh, and just thinking about it so like that as a promotional. Have some sort of pitch. Know yeah, your have target a pitch. audience. Have a takeaway with the ISBN. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and hopefully they'll be the kind of librarian that says, I will spend the money to get one copy of your book to take back. Yeah. And then you're like, and then it's, you know, best of both worlds. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking thank to you. me, John. I hope you had a good ALA. I have.